On Capitol Hill, congressional investigations are reserved for matters of great import, issues that will affect the security, prosperity, and the rights of the American people. And it was with this sense of public duty that Gerald Ford chaired a congressional investigation in 1966, an investigation into a series of UFO sightings that the Pentagon had failed to explain to anyone's satisfaction. We have not been hiding anything. The investigations have been made public. The explanations of those where there is a clear explanation have been made public. The hearing this morning was public for just that reason. It was an age of innocence when a veteran reporter getting to the bottom of a UFO story expected a straight answer from the Air Force. Does this mean that the Air Force really thinks that there are such things as flying saucers? This is, uh, cannot be released, no statement, until after the United States Air Force has reviewed the investigation. In the 1960s, the American public turned to the federal government and demanded an explanation for the increasing number of UFO sightings. The government offered little or no information, disregarding, or at worst, discrediting the sightings and the eyewitnesses. In Exeter, New Hampshire, in September of 1965, Air Force investigators arrived at the home of Norman Muscarello, and Norman learned that going public about his UFO encounter was a dangerous endeavor. They came in my mother's kitchen, asked where I was. He said, where's Norm? She says, in the living room. And he marched right out there without asking or anything. And he said, you, shut your mouth. Don't you say another word. Exactly what did you think you saw? He was trying to say to me that I didn't see what I saw. What Norman Muscarello claims he saw was a brilliant UFO in a field next to his Exeter home. On September 3rd, 1965, Norman was walking home just after midnight. I got right over to this stone over here. I'd say close to this stone wall. And this is when this thing appeared, and it was like it came out of nowhere. It was just zap. All of a sudden, there it was. Big as a house up over these trees. And he observed this craft uh, hovering over a home right next to uh, where he was. Uh, the home was completely bathed in red light. The area was bathed in red light. There was no sound. When Norman reported his encounter to the local police, he found out he was not alone. There were other sightings that night that made it interesting. In fact, prior to Norman seeing the UFO, Officer Bertrand came upon a woman motorist that was parked the side of the road, and she described a similar object that had chased her. In fact, there were a total of six reports filed with the Exeter police on the night of September 3, 1965. It was the number of credible eyewitnesses and the consistency among their descriptions that drew Raymond Fowler into the case. Fowler is one of America's preeminent UFO investigators. He has worked on many landmark cases, including the Allagash abduction. At the time of the Exeter sightings, Fowler was a member of NICAP, a National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena. Our mission was to investigate UFO sightings, make them available to interested scientists who are studying the phenomena, and uh, make this information uh, public. For the past 30 years, Fowler has followed through on Norman Muscarello's story. His investigation of the incident at Exeter is now considered one of the most extensively documented UFO sightings. What made this case interesting to me was the fact that an object as large of a barn as a barn was seen within 500 feet of uh, witnesses. As the early reports began to come into police headquarters, Officer Eugene Bertrand was called in from the field. After listening to Norman's story, they drove together to investigate the area. He pulled his cruiser up on the other side of the road, and we proceeded in this direction, down this way. He had a large sealed beam flashlight in his hand. At that point, police officer David Hunt drove up and joined the foot search. And they walked out into the field, and Norman yelled, look out, here it comes, and up over the treetops comes this object right at them with the red flashing lights. And come up over the tree line in this direction. Move this way, that way, back and forth this way, and then moved in that direction and headed eastward. When the UFO moved away, Norman and the two officers returned to the police station. At the same time, a local reporter was filing this story for the Exeter newspaper. 
And the police and the press weren't the only ones investigating the UFO sightings. Officials at nearby Pease Air Force Base became involved. First, they interviewed officers Bertrand and Hunt, and then Norman Muscarello, who claims he was told not to talk about what he had witnessed. I have no question in my mind. They're covering up something. I'm thoroughly convinced that the federal government, whether it be the Army, Air Force, Navy, uh, was out actively researching, trying to figure out what was going on. It is significant that the Exeter sightings were in very close proximity to the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard and Pease Air Force Base. UFOs seem to have a keen interest in places where atomic weapons are either stored or atomic energy is uh, being generated. This includes uh, places like the Portsmouth Navy Shipyard, where you have atomic submarines. It includes places like Pease Air Force Base, where atomic weapons are stored. Fowler believes that the Air Force launched a disinformation campaign, suggesting the Exeter UFO was a late-night advertising gimmick. It was a classical case where you had reliable witnesses seeing an object that they couldn't identify at close range, and then having the Air Force, on the other hand, investigating, but then telling the public that there was nothing to it. The incident at Exeter was the first in a series of UFO sightings, which culminated a year later, with mass sightings in Michigan. The public became increasingly dissatisfied with the military's official explanation, and a congressional hearing on UFOs was proposed by then-Congressman Gerald Ford. And he and other men and women in Congress felt that the Air Force uh, was not handling the UFO problem properly because they were getting so many complaints from the, the public concerning their explanations and so forth. Fowler's exhaustive report on the UFO encounter at Exeter was put into the congressional record. During the hearings on April 5, 1966, the committee presented the findings in Fowler's report to Air Force officials and asked for an explanation. I felt that this particular case uh, was interesting and that it showed that the Air Force wasn't really telling the truth to the public. They discussed the report and the Air Force backed down and admitted that the uh, object was uh, unidentified. Norman Muscarello's sighting had far-reaching effects on future UFO investigations. But for him, the incident at Exeter remains deeply personal. I wish to hell it had never happened. No, I really do. I wish I could have just waltzed through life without this happening. I'd like to just be a normal person and like everybody else. The congressional investigation did elicit an admission from the Air Force that the Exeter craft was, in fact, unidentified. But ufologists are frustrated that the investigation went no further, and that no one inside the government since then has ever tried to identify exactly what was flying over Exeter that night. <laughs>